So tonight we have what I think is a relatively overlooked little map in this game called Crossover 2, which was uh, one of, among the first uh, alongside Badlands to be added into the game post-launch. I forgot to mention that in the Badlands video that this and that map were added to the game February 15, 2000, which is a, a little fun thing. That would have been about 10 months after uh, Team Fortress Classic launched with the original six maps. Um, and it's funny because throughout 2000, um, eight maps would be added to the game. So you went from six, obviously, to 14, and then nothing for years until this game was put, moved on to Steam in, I think, January 2003, and then you'd have Ravelin. And so then that would bring you up to your final 15. So, you know, people talk about weird uh, TF2 release schedule. You ain't got shit on this game. Um, but that's getting off topic. Um, this is a, a solid little map. Um, with the exception of one area I'll point out, I think, you know, it's not given enough credit for, you know, how balanced it sort of is. Um, but, you know, it's, let's, let, let, let's let the map itself talk here. So much like any good uh, Captain the Flag map, there's a bridge in the middle of the map. You know, goes without saying. And also a watery area, which has entrances to the enemy base. So immediately, it's a screaming of two fort, but it's not the same thing, really. Like, there's some superficial similarities, but to call this a two-fort riboff would be really stupid. Because, for one thing, um, on both sides, you actually got this little tunnel here, where if you put a demo man's debt pack in a very specific place, it's kind of odd, you could blow a hole into the enemy little courtyard here, which is both a hit and a miss. Because, obviously, it, gets it, like, it lets you get another way into the enemy base, but it gives them another way to come out of the enemy base. So, anyway, enough of that for now. Here's a little courtyard here, which this is really dangerous. You thought 2-4 could be bad with its bridge, but the snipers are going to go be going nuts. So, you know, you, at first, unless you blow up that hole, this is basically like, you know, you're going to be your first line of defense. Aside from that underwater hole, which we'll get to in a bit. And this also, like Team 2-4, uh, happens to be where the capture point is in the sniper area. So keep that in mind. You got this little building here, which leads to the basement, of course. Um, you can only take up this elevator if you're actually on said team. So don't try to use this to get, like, you know, capture the flag. Because you're going to have a bad time. There is also a ladder I always forget about here where, you know, this is a good sp place to put, like, a sentry or something like that. And I think, I don't believe there's an invisible wall here. It's been a while since i played a class that has, like, any sort of verticality. So I'm going to test it later, probably. You might be able to get up here and do some silly shenanigans if you want. But don't quote me on that. We'll talk about down here in a second, because the interesting thing about this is that that's the flag room down right there. So in compared to some other some other maps, the actual journey to the flag is really short. But as you're gonna find out, um, it's actually a little bit more dangerous than it might seem. Actually, let's talk about the de de bottom area first. So yeah, here's where the flag would be. Obviously, the heavy weapons guy there grabbed it. Um, before you get into there, though. There's that one elevator I was talking about that you, if this is your base, you can use. And there's obviously a resupply. I don't believe this is a spawn point, but, you know, might be. But at the very least, uh, there's a resupply there, which, you know, watch out for sentry guns if you're going to be trying to go through this way. Because, you know, not just bots. I've seen people build uh, sentries here before, and you're not going to have a good time. Uh, to talk about this area a little bit more, you got this elevator, which you can use. If you're on the opposite team, and it actually will, like, I've seen, it's very rare, so unless the team's really incompetent, like the team you're attacking, you can build sentries up there. Keep that in mind. Um, if you come over this way, there's this little area here, which links into the water area I mentioned earlier. So this is how, another way, if you will, to get into the enemy base. You obviously want your heavy weapons, guys, and, like, really heavy... Like, you know, attack units to be going up on the top end. They're not going to be making a lot of progress, but they're just there. To be causing a ruckus, kind of like the bridge on 2 Fort. While you, your, like, medics and, you know, other classes should be trying to use this. And being careful, because, you know, the enemy team can see people drop out there. So you got to be strategic when you use this. By the way, 24 players. This map will work with 32. I just think it gets a little too busy for my taste. But, yeah. You can, if you're the attacking team... Use this to get up, though. And this leads into the one area that I really don't like. You see, the problem is, is that this is a spawn point, as you can see. With a really capable little defending perch, right? So you can build a sentry. 
And like, you know, it also leads into the battlements, so... Well, another place you could easily build sentries and have a respawn point and like, you know, restock, and that is a spawn point. So, my thing is, if you're trying to get the flag as the attacking team, you're gonna have a fucking shitty, shitty time regardless of what you do, excuse my language. Because, you can either try to conk jump back up if you have the flag, using one of these areas here. Try to take the little, like, you know, you can not take the elevator, of course. So you got, your options are either to try to get back up somehow here, which is going to be a little bit problematic because of what's going on. Like, you know, you can't really take this area. You can hide, but someone's going to find you. Or you can try to take the bridge up here, like the little conveyor belt, sorry. Or, and like, the conveyor belt will also, if you decide to take this, will lead you to the same place as this. Which you're going to have enemies up the ass here. So really, this map is extremely hard to capture the flag on, from my experience. I like it a lot, but it's kind of like Rock 2, where there's not a lot of actual victory going on here. Like, not a lot of actual, like, you know, anything getting done. Like, if you don't care about winning, then yeah, sure, who cares, right? Just have fun. But my goodness, I don't know why they were so insistent on having this map flow here. It's my one fault with this, because aside from that, I really actually like this map quite a bit. Not one of my all-time favorites, but it's up there with, like, you know, some of the other ones, like, 2 Fort, and, you know, like, you know, Kazel Zone, Well. You know, maps like, well, Well's my favorite, you know, or one of my favorites. It's up there with, like, Rock and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's just a quality map that's brought down by a really stupid map flow decision. But, yeah, it's great stuff. I don't see it, I don't remember it being played too much in map rotation. It's a shame, really. By the way, I'll bring up too, aesthetically, I think this is another map that, you know, really just nails what it's going for. The idea of, like, you know, the, we, they built these bases outside of, like, you know, some sort of mountain. You know, I just like the look of it. Again, it's funny, too, because it's daytime, and a lot of people don't associate daytime with atmosphere, but, you know, it's just the subtle lighting choice in this map I always really d dig. Gold Source game, you know, the Gold Source games have some really good lighting overall. So, you know, the lighting artists at Valve are on the top of their game, even at this time. Well, I'm gonna try to get break that tunnel open ASAP. It might not always be the best idea, but you know, I want to give the bots here, like you know, a few choices. Oh, come on! I haven't even started, and people are trying to grab the flag here. We gotta step our game up there, but red team. Yeah, see, this is also one of the few times you had to actually use anything on these like Team Fortress Classic maps, because most of the time, like the elevators and stuff are like automatic. And you don't even have to worry about that stuff. So anytime, like, you know, they make it so you have to actually, like, press a button just feels weird. It's wrong, you know? See, sometimes I feel you have to be flush against the wall. Because I swear I've had times where I put it here and it did shit. Let's see. Yeah, see? I don't know. It's weird. It doesn't work on the first go, but maybe you have to do it several times. I actually don't know, so I'm going to test that theory now. I'm gonna try it in the exact same spot, that corner there, uh, three times or so, and if it doesn't work, then I don't know. Cause you'd think to put it right against the sign, but that hasn't worked, that's not worked for me either at one point. Let's try it again. Let's see, moment of truth. I get none, nothing. Alright, so I'm going to do it one more time and see what happens. Because this is a problem I swear I've had before with this thing. You probably shouldn't have been standing there trying to enjoy the view, my friend. Now look at what you've done! Alright, let's see here. Is third time's the charm. I'm going to put it kind of in the corner again. I know I moved it a little bit, but still. Okay, so it seems to be you have to do it three times. That's very strange, but maybe they just figured that, you know, having it, like, just get destroyed for less would just not be, like, you know, good balancing. I don't know. Well, I'm over here. I might as well try to grab the flag. Never mind. Alright, so now that I'm at it here, too, I need to see something real quick. Well, conveniently, it seems there isn't a scout, a soldier on the team anyway, so let me switch over. Because there's another demo man, or there's two other demo men, so we're fine in that regard. Oh, this is a spawn point, too. Okay, all three of those are spawn points. So, yeah, it's really hard to get the flag. Now, let me see here. Yeah, look at that. I thought so. So, yeah, if you want to be, like, a soldier or someone, 
and defend up here. There you go. You got a lot of options. So really, it, it's I still fundamentally a good map, but my goodness, it's just really on the side of the uh, defenders in this case, which is sort of rare for an old school like FPS map like this. I know, I know I said earlier not to try to go through here, but I am a soldier, so I want to be causing as much, like, you know, offensive chaos as possible. I mean, that's how I always viewed the soldier as in, like, both this and TF2 as well, so. I mean, you could argue, well, you know, you should be a little bit smart about it, and I do try to be. But, you know, the soldier's really, like, you know, durable in both games. He's got a rocket launcher. He's just meant to be an attacker. He's the soldier. You know, that's kind of what it's about. I am going to use the water here just to give myself a little bit of a chance. Well, the heavy weapon guy's down there anyway. Well, I'm going to die as it is. By the way, obviously if you're playing against the slower classes here, you might want to be careful taking this water away. There's a very good chance you might start drowning. So yeah, don't take this way if you're going to die. Obviously give yourself a little bit of time. Well, I'm just going to go. MVB flag! Well, of course, where am I gonna take it? Oh, up to, like, Walmart down the street? I'd also advise this little thing, avoid building the sentry right in the flag area. Because, you know, someone's gonna, like, you know, pipe a grenade right into there from up there. You know, it's like, it's a being above in front of the snipers is actually a less dangerous area to hang out. So, yeah, I would build in one of the other areas to get make it a little bit harder. <laughs> I always hated that one sound that clip, honestly, though. As much as I like whoever the, like, the random person did the voices for the grunts in this game, that... You know the sound, the drowning one? I always kind of hated it. Actually, I'm very shocked that they haven't tried to, uh, build, um, any sort of sentry right in, the, like, that area. See, this is, like, the something that almost never happens. Well, never mind. Fuck! That's something that always happens, me making a freaking ass of myself and slapping my titty. So never mind. That wouldn't be the first time either. Not even on a bot, so just with bots. I've done that in a live server too, I know it. Well, well I already blew it, so I'm just going to be a sniper for a bit because I want to show off my terrible sniping skills. Man, I forgot how much slower this, like, so how slow the soldier can be in this game. Holy shit. I mean, this isn't the only good spot, by the way, to be the snipe in this map. I mean, you can actually snipe right over, and, like, pretty much well into the enemy base. In fact, I swear, I might try to do it in a moment here once I don't get killed by the soldier. Um, people have been, like, gone right into the tunnel here after it's blown up and just snipe from there. You're a spy. Come on. Like, right here, and just been a generally a nuisance. So this is a good pro strat, because I've seen people do it before, too. Idiot. I wonder if they're going to keep going back there. Obviously, it's a pretty big card to play to keep, um... Taking out the enemy snipers before they even have a chance to go over there. This might be the only time I, on any of these videos I've actually been helpful as a sniper, too. I can't believe it. I mean, hell, if you want to sit, like, kind of in this area and try to, like, snipe this part, go right ahead. There's a lot of good spots for snipers here. I mean, hell, even here. Like, you might be thinking I'm just grasping at straws, but the more I look at it, there's so many little areas that I could just see a sniper being able to just sit there and, like, you know, just be an absolute nuisance, public enemy number one on this map. Because it's a relatively, like, balanced map besides that, but I think, you know, just the way it's kind of laid out, the sniper's really good. Well, there's another sniper. I'm going to be pyro now. I haven't actually been pyro in this game for years. Like, it just never occurred to me. Pyro is essentially the war, like, you know, often regarded as one of the more pointless classes in the game, but, you know, it, it has its uses. Mostly just to be annoying, kind of. Like, you know, just to, like, you know, get in the way. I, like, send incendiary grenades and, like, fire stuff around to, like, you know... Just mess with people's views and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not completely useless, but it's definitely the least structurally sound in terms of actually having a purpose on your team, you know? Also, it's a relatively fast class with the rocket launcher. I mean, it's not the same as, like, the soldier's rocket launcher, but, you know, it's still kind of there to be annoying. It's 
Somehow I didn't see that sentry until way too late. I actually could have grabbed that if I just shot and been was strategic about it. We could have made that work. I better just rush it to try to keep it alive, huh? Then once I do that, then I'll go back to... Yes! Okay, at least it's alive. That's all I wanted to do, because now I'm going to go around and actually try to, you know, shoot that sentry from a distance. Hurry! Hurry! Well, I have the chance. Let's take it down. Take it down! Fuck, I don't know if I did it. Well, better keep that flag alive. Yes! Just keep it alive. Here we go, here we go. Yes! Yes! Okay, we got this. We actually... I didn't think, I swear to God, that there anyone we would actually, like, either of the teams tonight would actually get a catcher, but here we go. It actually happened. Although that's honestly pure luck more than anything else, considering I really didn't do much. I'm just kind of taking the credit because I happened to be there. Uh, what a great guy I am. Yeah! Oh, now we're going for the ass spanking. All right. And, uh, yeah, actually, that was cross, uh, crossover, too. Good, nice, underrated map, although it's a little defense-heavy.